bed bugs me! Bed bugs in a vacant unit. What do you do if you have bed bugs in a vacant structure or an extremely low level? How do you deal with that? Bed bugs need humans to get excited about moving around their environment. And when humans aren't there and there's no food, they only have two options. Number one, they can go looking for food, but there won't be any and they aren't traveling as far as the neighbor's house. The other option is to go dormant. We've all heard about them surviving a year without feeding, but that is only in a lab setting where they didn't have a choice. You can go up to three weeks without food, but you aren't going to, are you? You're going to find a Burger King somewhere, right? Well, so are they. So chances are they're going to move around a bit, but if there's no food, they have no choice but to shelter in place. The good news is when this happens, they cannot mate, molt, lay eggs, they don't grow, but they don't shrink either. When we treat a vacant location, we will need to get deeper than normal and try to draw them out. Bed bugs are attracted to warmth, blood, carbon dioxide, which is what we breathe out. So unless you're willing to spend the night and be the sacrificial bed bug attractor, we need to simulate these attractants somehow. Carbon dioxide is probably the easiest and cheapest thing to simulate. You can use dry ice, which is not water, it's actually frozen carbon dioxide. It doesn't have a liquid state at normal atmospheric temperature, so when it melts, it changes from a solid directly into a gas. You can also use CO2 canisters to release carbon dioxide. However, in my testing, this didn't work all that well. I wonder if it has to do with a little bit of oil that's uh, in there to lubricate the air guns that they're used in. I don't know. Both of these have one major flaw. They're cold and don't exactly represent the hot CO2 we breathe out, but it is an option. I would love to leave some mice in a cage to attract bed bugs, but I haven't had the opportunity to try that yet. I'm sure the PETA hippies would get their panties in a bunch over that, but I really don't care. I kill mice every day. At least here they can do some good for once. When used with the volcano pitfall trap, in my experience works better because it mimics chemicals found on your skin. It also lasts way longer than any other method, up to three months. On top of that, since it's a trap, you can monitor the population going forward. Normal sticky traps and traps without a lure don't do that well at catching and monitoring bed bugs especially in a vacant home where you need to draw them out to force them into your treatment and to monitor activity. Some smarty pants scientists discovered that they prefer the color black. Me too. I like to think that bed bugs are metalheads. What do you think? You can't see them drinking your blood uh, listening to some bubblegum pop. Anyway, bed bugs aren't great at walking on smooth surfaces because of their feet. The best way to describe their feet, it's kind of like a hook. A textured soft wall or fabric are no match for Mr. Bedbug. But smooth plastic or glass, not so much. So the volcano uses this to our advantage. We are the smarter species after all. The exterior of the volcano is textured so they can grab on and it's angled so they can climb right up. The idea is that they may be used to climbing up bed legs, and this attempts to simulate that. It's also black, but when they get to the top edge, it's smooth and slippery, causing them to fall into the trap right into what lured them in. Of course, the insides are smooth and inverted, so they aren't going to get out of there. The blackout trap is made to go under the legs of the bed and catch them coming and going. The blackout use, also uses these simple concepts. I love simple solutions to complex problems. Canines are great to detect the presence of bed bugs, but that doesn't get them moving. We also have a rapid swab test to check for bed bugs, but that just tells you if they're there or not, and that's it. The other difficulty with a vacant unit, even with all the tools and knowledge, is determining when they are gone. 
and when to bring the canines in to verify since your feedback is very limited at best. This can prolong elimination since our only feedback is the traps. The problem is the five bed bugs are in a trap when we come back we have no way to know if they were caught on day one or day 30. If everything was caught on day one then nothing then you're probably good to go. If they were caught throughout the month or on day 30 then you will need another treatment. There is no way to know. So we have to compare what we find today and what we found last time. We must follow a trend to decide what the next prudent step is. The best solution to the problem really is just to get humans living in there. That fixes all these issues, but that's not always an option. And most people aren't too keen on the idea of being used as bait. This is why we tell you not to change where you're sleeping after you find bed bugs. They're just going to follow you wherever you go. You are Burger King and they will have it their way. That's why we almost never find anything in the kitchen or in the bathroom. Because there's no food in there. I have a very particular set of skills. Skills that I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for bed bugs. I will look for you. I will find you. I will kill you. You're killing me, Smalls! Don't. I stand upon my desk to remind myself that we must constantly look at things in a different way.